Hello everybody, good to see you guys again. Thank you for tuning into my channel. Today I'm going to be uh, going over a few pointers for you guys uh, about picking a, a target when you want to go bug bounty hunting. So uh, I asked for permission uh, uh, from one of the hackers at Integrity if I could use their website to demonstrate. Uh, and I'm going to be showing you some programs on here. And I'm going to give you some general pointers on how to pick your program and one that you would like. A lot of people have asked me which one do I pick as a start. There are so many programs, I don't know where to begin. So I'm going to go over the few uh, of the differences in the programs that you can see. And I'm also going to be describing the website in its entirety. Uh, some general tips about bug bounty hunting you should know. And I'm going to go over the project pages as well. So. Uh, I picked Integrity because this is pretty much the website I would start with. There are not a lot of researchers on here uh, and we need a lot more talented researchers in the hacker community. Uh, I'm going to go over the general site with you guys for a second. So uh, when you first go into to Integrity.com you can see that there are a few different menu items. You can go to the four companies for research, public program and the leaderboards. And of course you can create an account and you can log in. <clears throat> the first thing we're going to go over is uh, the, pu the public programs. What I'm going to do is, uh, these are the programs that everybody can see. Uh, when you first register on Integrity, you should always register, of course, as a researcher. Because you want to be, of course, the people that watch my channel probably want to uh, go ethical hacking and bug bounty hunting. So you should register as a researcher. Um, when you do that, um, you can go and watch the programs and you can pick one for yourself, which one you like. Um, also, when you register at Integrity, you can also receive an at integrity.me email address. So I'm going to type that real quick, at integrity.me. So mine is the amazing ferret. And you can register on the different targets using this uh, IP, uh, this certain email address. So when I, for example, I have picked up a few programs for you, I'm going to open the Torst program right now. When I go to the Torst program and I scroll really far down, you can see the FAQ up here. Can I create a test account? Yes, and you are encouraged to do so. Please use your at integrity.me at email address for the account creation. So that's what I mean when I say you get an at integrity.me email address. It's simply your username at integrity.me. And if you want to create, for example, multiple accounts, you just add a plus and you can add anything behind the plus. So for example, if I want to create two accounts, I can create a tester account and I can also create an admin account using the same email address these will be forwarded to the email address that i used to register on integrity with so that's a little bit about your at integrity.me address i'm going to go back to the page right now <clears throat> and i've picked out a few programs for you guys uh, now in my opinion there are two types of programs you have your business to consumer type of programs such as torf such as foliccom these guys they sell a product to a consumer uh, and you also have your business to business uh, products. Uh, one of the examples I, put, I took out here is um, Suivo. Suivo uh, makes tracking for vehicles equipped with Suivo hardware. Now there are differences within the programs as well. Uh, at first I'm going to give you guys an example of my favorite program. So this is a project page that you guys are going to be landing on when you're picking your targets. Uh, as you can see, there are a few different tiers that you can land on. Um, different URLs, so these are the domains that are in scope, and you can see which tier the URL belongs to. Of course, you can also have uh, an app in scope or uh, another asset, and you can see which tier those assets belong to. And you can see when you report a vulnerability, you can set a severity for that vulnerability and then you can see how much that severity will pay out if it's accepted of course um, the description of the product uh, this is really interesting always read this page really well by the way guys 
read it from top to bottom, read it twice. There are in scope items, there are out of scope items, there are domains that you should know when you're hunting. Um, you should know these things really well and it always helps to know what exactly you are going to be testing. Alright, for the next part, in scope. This is very important in here. The, the target will often indicate which vulnerabilities they are specifically looking for. So in this case, Swivo is looking for any potential vulnerability that could impact the security of the domains. Um, examples of issues they'd like to know about are given. Not always the case. Um, also some GDPR um, issues they'd like to know about. Um, and this is the interesting part. Test credentials can be requested when logged in by using the Request Credentials button in the upper right corner of our Programs page. Only for the Customer Login panel credentials will be given. So what exactly does this mean? I showed you that you can register on some projects with the uh, authentigrity.me email address. In some programs, when you log in, there will be a Request Credentials button here. This will be indicated so, sometimes in the in scope section, but usually in the FAQ section. It's again, here, yes, you can fetch credentials by using the request credentials button. The request credentials button will be over here. So you just click it and you'll get a document saying what to do, or you'll get the login details. It'll all depend. Um, after that, you have the out of scope section. Really important that you read this. Um, know what it means when it says here. Uh, often they'll, for example, in here uh, they say re tags requiring unrealistic user interaction, usually the, anything related to email spoofing, content injection, email bombing, etc. etc. When you report a bug, you want to know if it is uh, out of scope, of course. Next part I'm going to show you is the rules of engagement. This is something you have to read. Sometimes the projects request that you do not use automated scanners. This, of course, again, is one of the things that makes me happy. I don't like automated scanners because that means that uh, everybody can use the same tool and everybody can get the same results. I like to get creative, but different people have different opinions, of course. And of course, please do not discuss bugs before they are fixed. Um, next up. Reporting guidelines, also really important to know, and the safe harbor rules. Uh, not every program is going to have the same rules of engagement, so be sure to read those for every single program that you pick. And the severity assessment. So here we're going to give you some examples of different things that can happen and how they would rate it according to severity. For example, storage cross-site scripting probably rated high, but be aware this can still change depending on the opinion of the company. For example, if I can do a stored cross-site scripting that can only affect my own account and cannot access any cookies, does not allow for any diff anything ex exploitable, uh, just a simple stored sc cross-site script that cannot steal any data or do anything, just annoy the user, it might get bumped down to medium. On the other hand, when I find a stored cross-site scripting that can take over an administrative account, for example, it might get higher, so for example, critical or, or exceptional. Um, it'll all depend on the context, and that's something I want to tell you guys as well. When you're a bug bounty hunter, you want to find the bugs that impact the company you're hunting. That's why it's so important to read the in scope section. Over here, they explain that GDPR is on the horizon, and they would like to know how private their data really is. So, for example, if you can find a bug that is uh, exposing data that should not be, that's something really important for this program. Again, you should always really read this page really well. Next up, you have the frequently asked questions. Um, well, that's pretty self-explanatory, I'd say. I also chose the Volkskant to give you guys another example um, here. They give an example of an excluding uh, page, so you can go for www.folixcon.nl, but you cannot go for the slash service uh, part of it. Uh, the description again is the same, in scope is this, is, uh, has some important notes for you, out of scope, 
uh, he, again read this really really well and over here you can see when you ask can I receive a test account they say you can register for normal accounts with your integrity.me email address max three accounts be sure to respect this if you don't respect the rules that are laid out on this page it can mean that your bounty gets denied and after all the work you're doing you really don't want it to happen um, of course I'm also going to paste this page in the description this gives you a little bit of information about your integrity.me email address um, it'll go more into detail than I ever can um, and that's pretty much what I wanted to show you guys uh, I'm going to go over one more thing uh, integrity has this cool leaderboard at the moment there I am number 25 <laughs> um, there, we need a lot more people competing on here oops sorry guys <laughs> sorry if you heard anything it was my cell phone dropping uh, we need more people competing on here so please join us uh, I'd like to thank you all for watching uh, my name on here is the amazing ferret <coughs> uh, I'll post my link in the profile in the uh, comments as well uh, and I'd like to thank you all for watching please remember to like this video to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one